This is a 25 millimeter T1.05 cinema lens. And for the money, I think it is one of the best lenses that you can buy right now. And I would like to thank Seven Artisans for sending this lens out for the purpose of making this video, but this isn't a paid or sponsored video and all the opinions are my own. The first thing that's gonna surprise you about this lens when you take it out of the box is how heavy and well built it is. This is an all metal lens. It's got a metal lens mount. It even has a metal lens cap. It has metal focus ring and aperture ring, which are geared, which you can use with a follow focus system. I have shot all the video you're gonna see in this video uh, handheld, so you don't have to use a follow focus system. And generally speaking, I don't, because I like to keep my rig small, but it is there if you need it. And both the focus ring and the aperture ring are really well dampened and really just a pleasure to use. Besides the price, the other headline feature about this lens is that T1.05 maximum aperture. And all that means is that there's a whole lot of light that is let through the lens to hit the sensor. Now, there is a slight difference between T-stops in a cinema lens and F-stops in a photography lens. F-stops in a photography lens just represents how big the opening is in the back of the lens. It doesn't take into account the glass elements in the lens, which might affect the light transmission through to the sensor. T-stops take that all into account. So one lens that goes to T1.05 is going to be able to transmit the same light to the sensor as another lens that does T1.05. And one of the first concerns that anyone should have when they hear about a lens going to T1.05 is, Yes, it opens that wide, allows that much light through, but how is the image quality? Because traditionally what we found, particularly with these budget lenses that are supposed to let a lot of light hit the sensor, what you find is the image quality at that wide open T1.05 is not very good. And I'm happy to report that the image quality out of this lens at T1.05 is excellent. And I dare say possibly the best lens as far as image quality that I've tested that allows this much light to hit, hit the sensor. There are minor amounts of chromatic aberration here and there, but it's nothing that really I find distracting or concerning. And that's only at T1.05. Once you stop it down to T1.4 or T2, that goes away and cleans up really quickly. Even more importantly than that is the sharpness and detail that you still get at T1.05. And I went out and spent an entire day just shooting everything at T1.05. And when I came back and looked at the videos, I didn't feel like I was wanting for any more sharpness or any more detail. The other thing that you're gonna find when you look at the images coming out of this cinema lens is the images look cinematic. And the difference between the images coming out of this lens and a standard photography lens are primarily the coatings and the level of contrast in the image and micro contrast. So with a standard photography lens, they're getting better and better at these coatings. They're getting sharper and sharper. And what you're finding is not only are they getting sharper, but you're getting more of this punchy, contrasty look out of them. This cinema lens, to me, if I look at the detail in these shots, I think it is just as good as many of my modern photography lenses, but what I do have is a more neutral image, a more creamy image, a more natural looking cinematic image. And I think that really comes down to the lens design and particularly the coatings on this lens. Now, if I was to pick my favorite feature about this lens with the optical quality that I like the most, it is the background blur. Starting right from T1.05, you get this incredible, creamy, dreamy, and smooth background blur. It's absolutely not distracting, and it forms a beautiful backdrop to whatever you have in the frame that is sharp and detailed and in focus. And the fact that the background blur is so blurry and the fact that it is so high quality, it even allows you to shoot at T1.05. And although the image isn't quite as sharp as it is at T1.4 or T2, the human eye actually identifies the difference between that blurry background and the foreground or the subject that is in focus. So often what we're looking at when we're thinking a detail looks sharp and detailed, we're actually looking at the difference between what is in the image that is in focus and how out of focus the background is and how good that looks. So by that measure, I think the background blur in this lens, it's it's certainly my favorite in these series of lenses. And actually it's probably some of the best background blur I've seen out of any lens. 
Coming back to the photography lenses, the standard photography lenses now, they are trying to make these lenses sharper and sharper to give more and more detail, mainly to resolve these huge megapixel sensors that we're getting nowadays. But the sacrifice we get is often the background blur becomes sort of jagged or distracting and not smooth. That is absolutely a trade-off I am willing to make to shoot with a cinema lens and get that creamier background. The other thing we should keep in mind is these modern lenses that are trying to dissolve or resolve 45, 61 megapixels, that's all well and good. But if you're shooting 4K video, that's only an eight megapixel image compared to 61 megapixels. So we don't even take advantage of all that extra resolution on these more expensive high-end photography or you know photo lenses. With the cinema lens, we really just need it to be sharp enough. And this lens is absolutely more than sharp enough. The other thing that I was extremely impressed with this lens with, and I really didn't expect it, was its close minimum focus distance and the high quality of that minimum focus distance. So the minimum focus distance is 23 centimeters. This allows you to get very, very close to the subject. When you're that close to your subject, if you shoot at T1.05, your depth of field becomes so shallow that it's almost completely unusable. So I almost don't think there's any point shooting at T1.05 and getting close to a subject like that. But if you stop the lens down to sort of T2 or T2.8, because you can get so close to the subject, you still get this incredible amount of background blur, but now you at least have a usable depth of field where you can actually focus on something and somebody can see what it is. But this really does give you an option that most cinema lenses don't give you. I don't know of many cinema lenses out there that focus as close as this one. And I think of the lenses I've got, this is the most close focusing cinema lens that I've got in my collection right now. One place that this lens does have a little bit of an optical flaw is flare. And what I have discovered after a fair bit of shooting with this is at T1.05, you get quite significant flare and the flare almost looks like it's a reflection from within the lens itself or some of the elements. I'm not exactly sure, but there's two ways you can solve this. One, if you shoot with a max map box and you have a sort of a flag over the top, that is actually gonna be able to eliminate that flare just by taking that light and getting it from not hitting the lens in the same way. The other option that you have is if you stop this down to T1.2, it virtually eliminates the flare, which I thought was interesting. So. I've got a shot I've probably thrown up on screen now where I was going back and forth between T1.05 and T1.2. And by the time I got to T1.2, it essentially eliminated the worst and most annoying parts of the flare. So if you do not have a matte box on and you find yourself dealing with some flare that you're not happy with, just stop it down to T1.2 and it's gonna get rid of that flare and the image is gonna look great. With chromatic aberration, you do get a little bit of chromatic aberration in high contrast scenes when you're shooting at T1.05. But once again, you just stop that down to sort of T1.4 and that cleans up really well and I have no problem with it. I also found in most of the situations that I was shooting in trying to get a cinematic looking shot, even when I was shooting at T1.05, the type of lighting and the type of shot I was going for wasn't really lending itself to any chromatic aberration. So for the most part, there was no chromatic aberration that I worried about in any of the shots that I was getting. It's only if you go looking for it and try to create that chromatic aberration to see that it's there that I could find it. But for the most part, it really wasn't an issue. One thing that all cinema lenses are supposed to be good at is controlling focus breathing. And focus breathing is just the image zooming in and out when you're drawing focus from near to far. And what I found with this lens is there is little to no focus breathing. And what this allows you to do is when you're sort of shooting a cinematic scene, you've got a subject off in the distance that you wanna focus on, and then the action happens closer or somebody closer to the camera speaks, then you draw the focus in closer and it focuses on the person close to you. This way you don't even change the composition of the shot, you just have a single composed shot, which because the person in the distance is in focus, when they, when they start talking or the action's there, the viewer's eye is drawn to that person. And then as they draw the focus to the person closer to you and they're talking, now the attention is, is on them. What you don't want is you don't want that zooming in and out because it ruins the entire effect of what you're trying to achieve. 
So in my testing, there was virtually no focused breathing whatsoever with this lens. This lens is available in a number of different mounts, and I will list those mounts and links through to the current pricing in the description down below. If you were gonna buy one lens for cinematic video and really capturing high quality cinematic video, I would start with the 25 millimeter T1.05, and I think if I was gonna add a second one to that setup down the track, the next one I would add would be the 50 millimeter T1.05. And I've just thrown a video on screen now. This is my review of the 50 millimeter lens from this set. And I think if you look at these two lenses as a two lens kit, you're pretty much gonna be able to cover just any cinematic sequence that you're looking to shoot.